my colleagues come from the gig world, Oracle, IBM, Cisco, um, startups, etc. And the mission that we realized we wanted to do and the, the thing that brought us together was basically that we want people to be able to make the most of their devices. We, wanted peop we want people to be able to, as we said in Spanish, sacarle el jugo uh, of their devices. We realize that devices are becoming ubiquitous, and in Latin America, they are becoming not just ubiquitous, but they are becoming the first time that there's a bridge building a massive gap between the have and the low have. Uh, we didn't have desktops in Latin America. We jumped from nothing to mobile phones. We jumped from nothing to smartphones. So we have a huge opportunity to build up on those bridges, and that's what we realized. But we want people to be able, really, to make the most of that investment, because a phone and a mobile device is an expensive investment, and it's not just for entertaining, and it's just not just for selfies and everything in the middle. A phone is to learn, a phone is to m be more productive, and a mobile device, including a phone, should be that. Uh, we use WordPress for all the good reasons that we had heard in this conference and many more, and particularly because we are bootstrapped. We don't make money with our blogs. So WordPress was the perfect platform to start this community. Um, this is how we're moving forward. So we, are, we have a conversation with Spanish speaker uh, and with a Spanish speaker audience, and uh, we realize that we have 20% of our readership is in the US, 20% of our readership is in Mexico, and the other 20% is in Colombia, where we come from. So without any effort, particularly, we reach 40% of a wide population, the US Hispanics, or the US people that speak Spanish, and uh, the Mexicans, we are, who are kind of a bit ahead of the rest of the Latin Americans, because they have cheaper, internet access in Latin America than the rest of us. Uh, we, we decided on a platform like WordPress because it was responsive and we realized that most of our traffic is coming from mobile devices, as, as I said before, and it's a big opportunity because penetration rates in Latin America are more than, are, are reaching 100% and the growth rates are double, uh, are double digit and they will be double digit for us. As far as, we, as, as far as we see, as far as the analysts see, and we are seeing the big, cheap smartphone players coming into Latin America. So that will, be, that will become huge in the next couple of years. And uh, this is what happened to our audience, as you can see in, from the graph. Uh, we, we start with a few, and a few were less than 1,000, which probably is the sum of all our friends from Facebook. And um, all of a sudden, we start seeing more bigger numbers. Um, bigger numbers um, that in June last year became 412,000 um, views. And we haven't, and I want to insist on that, and you will see why. We haven't done anything in particular or particularly sophisticated to reach those views. Those views are people that are engaging with us for the right reasons. I mean, and I mean the right reasons, people who want to have a conversation with us, to want to learn with us, because if if on the one hand, when you have 90% or 80% on average penetration of smartphones and mobile devices, you have less than 1% of the population speaking English in, in Latin America. So there's a huge, huge information gap. Because geeks will always find a way to read whatever language. I mean, if they can code, they can read any language, I guess. But normal people like me and, and the rest of the smart user, smartphone users wouldn't find the information they need. And still, a phone in Latin America, more than in anywhere else, I mean, in, in, like in most of the developing world, is an investment. And we want people to feel that it's an investment and that they can make the most of it. So what happened? And we start kind of gathering and, and realizing why do we move from a few to a lot? And the year 2015 was our big year. Lots of things happening on that year. And, and I will explain to you. First of all, one of the Flipboard editors realized that our magazine in Flipboard was super impressive because we don't, we don't talk nonsense about devices. We don't talk nonsense about apps. We didn't sell our, our soul to advertisers and we're making the most of an independent digital platform. And we talk about a lot of things. I talk about education and technology. I'm a women's advocate, so I talk a lot about women and technology. My, uh, one of my colleagues is a gadget, a gadget 
a geek, so he will talk a lot about gadgets, and he will manage to get gadgets from all over the world to review. Um, some people are better talking about, uh, some of us are better at talking about apps. Uh, one of, uh, um, of my, my partners and my colleague is, um, he's really good on productivity. He's an engineer, an industrial engineer, and he's been working all his life on the, on the paperless home, the paperless organization, the paperless teams. So he, bring, he brought as well that kind of thing from technology. And one thing that is very important is we all brought our political vote. And that's one thing that you can do on an independent media, in an independent digital platform, is you can bring your own political voice, either to advocate for women, either to, ad either to advocate for services like Uber, that we know it's been a big conversation, but we also have talked about um, the pla uh, Facebook plans to kind of um, bring cheaper internet on, 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 on poorer countries, so we, we, and we want to have that political voice as well. And we start growing. On the, on, the, on the second quarter of uh, last year, we started growing and growing. And on, on uh, June 2015, we grew a lot. And at that point, we, we met with some people that m in here in Miami that, use, that are investors in media. And they suggest some ideas so we will monetize and we will become a, make a money-making machine. And that's what they want us before we invest. And we have lots of discussions and philosophical discussions and money discussions and yes we want to work on this full time and then we realize well if we want to work on this full time we need to give our company to someone else i mean as remember we have a hipster who's an, a successful entrepreneur we have a banker yes with the salary of a banker and we have another um, entrepreneur who's a very successful so if you start summing up just what the four of us will cost to this endeavor we will need to give our company to investors. We didn't feel like that's what we wanted to do. We, we wanted to believe on the dream of having an audience as huge as Latin America and, and um, sell at the exit. And so that's what we decided. And th so at that moment, our philosophy changed and we started realizing that we could make deals with people that normally we wouldn't, wouldn't make deals with a small outlet like us. 5,000 people, unique views. That's, that's not compared with the big media or compared with anything. But we did, and we made deals with these people. And these people were startups two or three years ago. The people that, that you see there, we make, and, uh, and they believe on us, probably because they still have this, the startup spirit. And these are the kind of people that we want to partner with. Of course, if a big media come and say, well, you can keep your stock and be part of our media, we will talk about it. But these people, and I want to just stop a little bit on them in a minute. Uh, they gave us the opportunity to monetize our site without selling ourselves to, to anyone. Uh, the first ones are Teeth. They used to be um, a startup. It's a, it's a French company. They, are based, uh, they have a big headquarter now in Miami, and they monetize videos, uh, uh, video advertising. And their advertising is beautiful. It's beautiful, as you can imagine, French things be. I mean, gorgeous. Um, we, we made, we made um, a partnership with TubiTube. Uh, they are an MDM. They monetize YouTube videos and they hit us very hard because we don't produce good videos. And we know that we don't produce good videos. We are bloggers, not videographers, which is, which is kind of nice because we are experimenting and we are ready to experiment. And we, are, we have all that spirit that comes from a startup. And we, we have um, a deal with Line, and this is our massive social media, and they're great. If you don't know them, go there. It's amazing. I, I, I wasn't there before. And they're doing a great job um, distributing content and providing um, a, a community that is very interesting. We, we did a deal with Pulso. Pulso is a, it's a bit like the Huffington Post, but lower key, I guess. But they, do, they, they gather and curate and and provide um, content in Spanish about the news, about uh, technology, that we are going to be the provider for technology content. And we like them because they, they didn't ask us much in terms of hours of work, in terms of uh, money, or in terms of anything. We, we are not, and, and, and it's, this is not very humble for me, but we are not ready to kind of give up what we have built to anyone with this. And we just made a deal a month ago with ACAS. ACAS is a startup. Uh, they come from Sweden, from the, probably the success of Spotify. 
and they monetize podcasts. And all these people, they are becoming big players, and we met them through the big media. I read Forbes, and I, and I saw a note about Aker. I met the Tubi2 CEO on, a meeting, on, on, a, on an event like this one. I met the TDS CEO for Latin America as well. So the takeaway here is go and meet the people that you want to work with. Go. Go to the events and say, look, I have this. I have 10,000 people, but these are, this is my audience. They are women. They are Latino. They speak Spanish with a, uh, English with a strong accent. They are like this, and they will love it. Because that's what they're looking for. That's what advertising are looking for. That's what people like Pete want to show as a showcase. They don't want to show a site with five million people. They want to show a site where people appreciate what it's showing, that people will click, and the video will show. I mean, we, we will see the art of those videos. Um, we also have a, um, um, a deal with MSN, and we are providing content to them, which is great as well. I mean, this is, a, this is a massive platform, and we are there. So for us, it's kind of, yes, we can make it. And by the end of last year, we have a ransomware, viral, you name it, crisis. Uh, of course, in the middle of the holidays. And we Latinos, we know how to do holidays, so there was no one available. And uh, we were out for a, for a week, and then patchy for another week. And that's what we begin this year. But I think we begin, we, begin, we began this year with all these things coming up and getting a little bit more money. So this is our platform, this is our community. We have, uh, we have uh, 9,000 9, uh, followers on Facebook, and I hope all of you will follow us after this. And we have um, a Twitter line that is very interesting because it, it has uh, news in Spanish, news in English, and so on and so forth. We are in online where we have 70, 72,000 people. We are on YouTube, and we want to grow that. So if you do videos in Spanish about technology, come and see me because we're looking for people. I'm looking for bloggers. I'm looking for female bloggers, please. Um, we are 12 contributors, and, we, are, and we, are, we, we talk about education. We talk about women. We talk about children. We are about to sign an agreement with Common Sense Media Hispano, and we will be there together with Univision. So signing that deal for us, is really, really a good deal. Not, not just because they have Univision as their other partner in Spanish, but because we all know what Common Sense Media brings. It brings all the credibility that they have as a place where you can, where you can trust as a parent and as a teacher. Um, we write about gadgets, we write about productivity. We are 12 people, and we just brought someone to start writing about smart cities. And technology is great to get our cities work and work for their citizens, and to get the citizens work for the city as well. Uh, we have people talking about uh, banking. We will, and we are, and that's what we're having. And we had already interviewed interesting people, and these two guys, well, most of you know who they are, Mr. Bob and uh, Kawasaki, and we were the only ones who could interview them face to face in Colombia. So we feel very proud that these two gurus that most of us read on a regular basis, were there, that both was tweeting about us. I mean, that kind of, ah, you know. Um, and I've been in Miami covering the tech scene, speaking with people, being here. I mean, for me, it's amazing to be here. So this is the three takeaways of this, how to be, build a community. Be as independent as you can be. We couldn't be talking about devices and how good or bad or no, so, so the devices are, if we sell our, our souls and our platforms to technology companies. We wouldn't be able to have this platform if we weren't writing consistently. Uh, we wouldn't be able to reach millennials as well as 40-something like myself, as well as people like my mom, who's in her mid-70s, if we wouldn't experiment. And we experiment all the time with video, with photos, with uh, covering events. Um, we have two bloggers that are children, I mean children, 13, and they are the, our gamers. So we, we are experimenting. And most important, and I think that's one of the key takeaways of this conference is your credibility. And here is where you're using your name. And this credibility brings you to places like this, where I feel super proud to be, but as well allow you to interview a guy like Kawasaki or a guy like Boss or the people that I have interviewed here 
in Miami and um, and well I think that's it for me and thank you very much it's a pleasure being here